Jeff, thank you so much for joining us here at Super Investor. Thank you for having me. Good to see you. It's four years now since you launched your second Riz um, arm in Manulife. And obviously in that time, you've seen development. So what would you describe as the sort of characterization of the position we're in at the moment? And how does that reflect? Obviously, you, you've worked in this industry an awful lot longer than four years. So how does that position differ to perhaps things we've seen in the past? Well, the, the markets are cyclical and we are in a deal economy recession right now. The secondary market usually thrives at those times. And this is one of those moments where sponsors and limited partners are coming to the secondary market for liquidity. So the opportunity for investment has really never been better. And in terms of those factors, what would you say is key to having an impact on the secondary market, particularly at the moment? What are the key factors that are going to impact? The key factors in a deal economy recession, what I mean by that is that the volumes of mergers and acquisition activity are down by as much as 50%. The uh, ability to IPO, initial public offering, as an exit alternative for sponsors, hasn't really been there in any great numbers. So those factors are driving sponsors to seek liquidity from the secondary market. It's also driving limited partners to seek liquidity from the secondary market. So those are the macro factors that are really funneling deal flow to us at this point in time. So in that market, what are you particularly interested in at the moment? Well, I don't know if you know, but Manual Life uh, focuses exclusively on GP-led secondary. So think continuation vehicles. Um, those are situations where sponsors select good assets out of their existing funds, run processes on them, only among secondary investors and set up special purpose vehicles to own these assets for longer. It's really about owning good companies for longer. And Manulife, we have been focused like a laser beam on this opportunity set because it's the single most undercapitalized sector of the secondary market. So it's kind of sticking with what you know in an environment that is quite tumultuous. <laughs> yes, um, we are a purpose-built team of investors who like to think deeply and look broadly at opportunities. So we spend six weeks or more on analyzing a single company. Think of us as private market analysts or private market stock pickers. And that, has the, that is the opportunity that's been open to the secondary market really starting 10 years ago with a trickle and today has become a torrent. But while the opportunity set is equally weighted 50-50 between traditional LP secondaries and GP-led secondaries, the capitalization is probably 90-10 in favor of traditional LP secondaries. What does that lead to? A very good investment environment for GP-led secondaries. You talk there about being laser focused. What sort of team do you need to be able to capitalize on what you're describing most? Well, we need a team of, of people who think deeply about companies. So, you know, we talk to customers, suppliers, management teams. We talk through Manulife sponsor centric platform to a variety of different sponsors to triangulate around what the reality is on the ground for a particular company. You know, we are not desktop analysis. We do not just fill in spreadsheets. We get out in the field and we really understand how a business works. Some have described this market as leading to a kind of wait and see type attitude for a lot in private markets. There's a bit of hesitancy to, to go out there and find new opportunities. From what you're describing, you're, you, you believe you are seeking out those new opportunities, even if it is in an area that perhaps you've had some security in in the past? Well, first place, the opportunities are finding us. I mean, we are seeing a barrage of deal flow. Now it's shifted, even in the GP-led market, from the large cap sponsors who can't really get the values that they were sinking in the secondary market to the lower end of the middle market and lower mid-market sponsors who are quite interested in accessing the secondary market, in some cases for the first time. They've been supported by the growing institutionalization of secondary market activity in the banking community. There are now specific groups within double the number of investment banks who had previously been in the business to focus on the GP-led sector. So we are, we are seeing deal flow from all sides. Now, we don't sit on our heels and just catch deal flow as it comes. We are out there going and looking for additional deal flow. And it's really, capital is scarce right now. Capital is king. And if you have capital and can invest, you can command some very good terms in all markets and in particularly in the GP-led market. Obviously, you're very focused there and talking very much about, about the return and, and, and the success. Is there anything else that, that drives you, having worked in this industry for 25 years, in terms of you know, what this industry could be doing and what the purpose should be? Well, uh, let's take a step back. Uh, the secondary market is really a mechanism by which liquidity comes to private markets. 
the shift of capital from the public markets to the private markets has been noteworthy. You can look at all sorts of statistics, but the number of public companies across the world's various exchanges has reduced dramatically over the past decade, decade and a half, for a variety of reasons, which we don't have time to get into here. But in the, by the same token, partnerships, which are the vehicle of choice for private markets investments, have proliferated across all asset styles, corporate finance, infrastructure, real estate. But those partnerships are 10-year contracts, and there's no liquidity that's provided in the contracts. You go into the partnership, and you expect money to come back when it comes back. So it was natural that liquidity would be created, transactional liquidity, and that is the macro concept that has animated the secondary market for all this time. GP-led secondaries allow for laser-like liquidity, precision in portfolio building that groups like us are able to take advantage of. And that really started, as I said, with a trickle in 2012. It went through a, a years of adjustment and really started catching fire in 2017, 2018, 2019, where it has become 50% of the secondary market. But it is, again, an undercapitalized part of the secondary market. And because of those, those of us who have capital are able to take advantage of that. You sound very buoyant and very optimistic. So what do you hope the next 12 month, 12 to 24 months looks like for you guys? Well, I, I, I am buoyant and optimistic and I believe with all my heart in what I'm doing, but we do need to see capital markets open up. We need to see the ability for sponsors to liquidate their assets and return money to investors so that wonderful flywheel that fuels the private equity market can start turning again. Right now it's not. Uh, we, we are in a a drought of realizations and and frankly that's slowing everything down from performance development to fundraising. And where would you sort of encourage caution if you like in that sort of environment as well? You've been very optimistic in what you've said but yeah. where would you say caution needs to be deployed now? Well if you're an investor and you're seeing inbounds from bankers and sponsors on GP led deals I would absolutely uh, uh, offer that caution should be taken. Because while there are many good investments, one needs to be a specialist in that market to separate the wheat from the chaff. And, and there is some desperation out there. There are some folks who have not been able to fundraise, who have some assets that are not so good, who are now taking advantage of the possible liquidity in this market. So if you are one of those folks out there who is not fully equipped to see the totality of the market and to do the deep analysis that you need to do on these investments, then you're, you're possibly suffering from adverse selection. How important for you is it to come to something like Super Investor and get to be with your colleagues, to have conversations and to have those ideas sparked and be able to sort of affirm your position, if you like? It's incredibly important to come to these events because we all work in separate realities and we are surrounded by our own echo chambers. Super Investor and Super Return provide the opportunity to merge our respective echo chambers together and thereby cancel out the echoing effect so that we can really see what's going on and take the tenor of the market. Jeff, I hope you have some really valuable conversations while you're here. It's been great to talk I to you. I have already. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed speaking with you. Great to talk to you.